welcome to Angus IT, the podcast all about anxiety, depression, and fucking detoxing ourselves from 2020. It's done. God, that feels good to say. I know that things don't automatically change just because we're in a new year, but the mental state of just knowing that we're no longer in 2020 feels so good. It feels amazing. And I, you know, personally had my own journey with 2020, as we all did. Um, And it wasn't all bad. In fact, in a weird way, this was maybe the best year for me in terms of growth and figuring out things about myself. I did a lot of just inner um, introspection and just like, who am I? What do I want out of life? What's the meaning of all of this? <laughs> yeah, I got um, I got like sage and crystals. So, you know, that's how it goes. But no, I mean, just talking in general, I think that I learned a lot this year, as did a lot of people. And I think quarantine made certain activities available to me that normally weren't. And I don't know, it was a weird year uh, where horrible things were happening, but I personally was kind of okay for some of it. Some of it, I was really not okay. But that's just how a year goes, right? Like nothing's always perfect. But, you know, the external factors definitely didn't help my journey. And I'm sure all of you have had your own like shit storm this year too. So I thought it'd be fun if we did like an exorcism of 2020. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to just complain the whole time. That's, I never complain on this podcast. <laughs> Guys, stop it. But maybe just a, a healthy detox of the things that just didn't go well and then focusing on the things that did go well. So not ignoring the bad. I know a lot of people are like, 2020's in the rear view mirror, we're moving on. And like, no, you got to remember what happened this year. Yeah, there was important shit that happened this year and you can't just pretend it never happened. That's not how life works. You bottle shit up. That bottle will explode. Glass, it hurts. And it's really hard to pick up. Like I cracked a picture frame the other day And I thought about just not picking it up because it was in this entrance hallway to my kitchen. I have two little entries and I can't go through one of the entry where the picture frame broke because there's usually a lot of uh, recycling to the point that it uh, blocks the entrance. I'm going to stop the story because we're getting into like Elaine's hoarder status. So I picked up the glass. That's all we need to know. Anyway, so 2020, like, fuck it. But also, you know, remember it. (laughs) so that you can do better in 2021. Also, I personally love listening to people review their year. I love to see people grow. It's just addicting because then you're like, I want to grow that way too. And like, that's so cool. You did all of that. And then you remember you did things and aren't a worthless sack of shit. And you're like, oh my God, my shit's kind of good. It's like fertilizer. Like it's not just like manure. It's, It's fertilizer. And there's a bug flying around my mic, and I basically just ate it. So this is hot. I love 2021. Thank you, bitch. So shit that didn't, like, you know, go really well in in 2020, uh, personally. I think, like, externally, we all know it because we do our doomsday scrolling. There was a lot of, like, just rampant active racism, and there was a lot of just political chaos there was fires there. I mean, the list just kept going. I'm sure I'm forgetting. Real- oh, the c- quarantine, COVID-19, you dumb ass. <laughs> yeah, you know, all of that. So I'm not going to really dive into that because we've, you know, it's all there and I have episodes that go back onto it and people have a lot of great resources. So this is all about me. Isn't that great? God, Elaine, stop it. But I'm a double Gemini. I can't help it. <laughs> I think what was hardest this year for me was like, I went through a big medication change last year, starting in November, and I officially leveled out in March, literally the week before the world shut down. I finally felt like my true self. Each time you do a new medication, you know, you can have mixed results. Sometimes you're like, oh, this was not good. This is really bad. And other times you're like, okay, I feel good. Um, But that doesn't always mean it's the right medication. Uh, So as time progresses, you're like, you know, I feel good. But like, maybe my definition of good is just because I was so bad that this is better. But that doesn't mean I'm probably where I should be. 
you know, and then that's when you like start experimenting with things. Um, not like recreational wild stuff on the streets, just like actual dog. Anyway. Oh, God, we're off to a great start this year, aren't we, guys? Um, but, you know, I finally found a medication that I feel like I am me and I have the opportunity to be me. And my thoughts aren't so focused on like anxiety and figuring out how things work or trying to figure out constantly how do I interact in this situation? How do I figure out the system? I don't know what to do. I have free space in my head now. I get to rent other things in my head and it's been great. And so in one way, 2020 was amazing because I got to like be me and I was so ready to start like socializing more. Like I'd really been like working up, getting over like my fear of going to new places, figuring out like bars. I had a really big like anxiety thing about bars because I just was like, I'm an idiot. What do I order? You know, that classic thing. And I was like just about to really hit it. And then a pandemic hit. <laughs> and uh, I didn't go out to places. I know some people did, but I, I did not. So uh, that kind of was weird. It sucked. But when it hit, I wasn't as anxious as I thought it would be. I actually kind of leveled out and fe- felt good. And there was actually an article at some point where uh, a lot of like, you know, there was like a good amount of people who felt the same way. And it was probably because we were such anxious and depressed people that technically the worst had already happened. And so we didn't have to like doomsday think in our heads like it was like, yeah, I guess this is it. OK, <laughs> um, like we're just so used to like taking on like random onslaught shit that like that muscle for us has been built up. And we're like, OK, sure. Cool. Not fun, but like I'll roll with it. And so I got really into dance. (laughs) You could call it working out, but I call it perfecting my art. But I got really into dancing and I started getting healthy. And on this new medication, I just I felt better. And my old medication made me want to eat constantly. And so I figured out like, oh, I like don't always feel hungry 24 seven now. Like I get to just eat a meal and I'm good. And like I just felt myself feeling healthier and better. And then in the summer, I took a big, giant fucking deep dive into my depression. Like, I would say from June or May, I would say from May to, like, November (laughs) of 2020, I was so fucking depressed. And it wasn't necessarily about the external factors going on in the world. They, like, contributed. And I think sometimes I wasn't aware of how much it affected me. Like, I'd forget that we were in a global pandemic, you know, I'd be like, why do I feel like so sad for no reason? It was like, oh, because it's quarantine and I can't do the things I normally would want to do. And it feels hopeless. And, you know, all these other things I'm seeing that just feel hopeless and really angering. But personally, I did not like what my life was doing. But I felt really good. That's a weird combo, right? So my med change, I feel like I'm me. But now that I'm me and I have all these like, again, the free space in my mind to focus on things, I looked at my life and I was like, what am I doing? Like, I don't think I'm doing what I want to do. And I didn't know what it was that I wanted to do. And that is possibly the most annoying thing to feel. Is that what you're doing right now? You don't want to do it and you know it wants to be something else. But what is it? How do you figure it out? I took multiple assessments. <laughs> I watched videos. I did tarot. I talked to friends. I even journaled. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, what the fuck is going on? And it's it's an uncomfortable place because then you feel stuck. And so I felt stuck and I felt sad and I felt like I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. And like my poor psychiatrist just had to listen to me like say these same things for basically a year. And I ended up starting working on the Secret Life Project, which I think I brought up in November or October, which I know is annoying for me to like bring this up and then not tell you what it is. But I will tell you, I will be able to tell you soon. Can I say tell you one more time? Yes. Tell you what? I won't say it anymore. Um, I will be able to reveal my life secret project soon to you. Uh, We're almost wrapped up. But basically, that life project was all about What do I actually need to do right now to figure out myself because this is not working, but I need to give myself the space to figure that shit out. So it's 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 done. 
basically. The life project is done so it can begin, if that makes sense. Chapter two can begin. And it was scary to do, but sometimes you got to, you know, look at yourself and be like, I'm a boss ass bitch and I'm going to do this. <laughs> I took a lot of bold leaps, I would say, in 2020. And especially when you have all this, uh, you know, time at your home and a lot of introspection because you're not necessarily going out. You learn a lot of things. So yeah, the hardest thing this year was probably coming to terms with where I was in life. So in a weird way, it was good because like I'd rather change things if I'm not happy with them. But it was also bad because then I knew how shitty things felt. And then I felt shitty for like majority of the year. Other side of the coin too, personally, uh, like I mentioned, there are certain things where I've learned how to manage my anxiety and a lot of it requires constant practice. And so if I don't do certain things, I get out of practice and I get anxious again, which means during this quarantine life, there are certain things that I've been anxious to do again. A uh, big one, my fear of ordering food, uh, which was an episode I did. Uh, it's, it's a small thing. It's annoying. It seems like it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but it really stresses me out, but I've done it enough that I feel good about it. But for a while, like we weren't even sure if we could get takeout. We weren't sure how contagious it was on surfaces. So I just didn't. And grocery shopping, like I didn't go anywhere and I was terrified to. So like when I went into a grocery store wearing a mask, I was like, this is such a weird experience. And so a lot of the things that I feel like I've worked so hard on, seem to just go away, which is really heartbreaking if you've been working on it for years and you finally feel like you're in a place where you don't need to worry about it in a way anymore. But what I will say is if you feel the same way, it's not completely gone. You've already built up the muscle. And so when you get to go back into it, it might not be comfortable, but I think it'll snap back pretty quickly because I started doing Uh, drive throughs with Taco Bell specifically. And even through like the small ways that I can exercise these uh, anxiety muscles, it's been working. It's been coming back and it hasn't been as terrifying. So I'm just going to put out that positive vibe to you that like it's not lost forever and you haven't taken steps back on your mental health journey. There just might be new obstacles to overcome as you're hurtling through your, your, uh, your track of life but we don't support running here we just sit and eat chips (laughs) uh you know in terms of creativity that fucking got shot in the ass this year for me too because i was so depressed and i hated everything going on um and you'll notice i think starting in september i started missing episode weeks and october got pretty bad in november and i was trying to work on the christmas special for so long and it weighed so heavy on me because I didn't feel creative and I I could not come up with an idea, which doesn't usually happen to me. Like I at least have an idea, even if it's not the best, but I couldn't follow through on anything. And, you know, I personally had the option to not do it, but to me, they wouldn't have been relieving. It would have been like really sad because I love doing the little audio plays and I just really was beating myself up day after day. And so basically for two months straight, I just felt like utter shit. And so to even come on to my podcast or to come on or to like open a blank document and try to write, just nothing came out of it. One of the things I've been wanting to do is do creative things on the side. But here I don't have the energy, nor do I feel like I even have any creativity coming out of me. (laughs) Like I just felt like a dry sponge with no wet surface to mop up. That's a great example of the things that were coming out of my mind uh, in the past three months. <laughs> Oopsies. But I feel a lot better now. Um, again, the Secret Life Project has really just relieved a lot of shit for me, which is great. And I feel very positive about uh, my recording schedule. It will be back on track. I'm really excited. I think that I have a new joie de vivre and um, some fun ideas coming up ahead, Uh, though I always would love to hear suggestions from you since you listen to this fucking shit show. If there's something you were like, Elaine, talk about this, I'm totally open to it. And you can DM me on Twitter or Instagram at Ingeside too. Okay, Elaine, moving on. So that was a lot of my like mind fuckery of 2020. Um, I think having friends was really helpful. (laughs) 
shocking that I have friends I know, but just the friends I had in all these different places. I met with my two friends, Christine and Carolyn, biweekly, and we would talk life and podcasting, which was just so helpful to have people with completely different like situations and brain mindsets to just bounce off of your life when you're so in it you kind of forget what the bird's eye view might be like and so you talk to these brilliant people and they're like oh what about this and you're like oh why didn't I think about that also another group uh clean hands dark soul that's the name of this group we've created uh that's made it sound way cooler than it is but we all met at podfest and we have watched movies together, we chat, we're about to have these fun like monthly seminars with each other because we're nerds. Carolyn, different Carolyn, uh, that Christine was Empty Nest Coach and Carolyn was Beyond Six Seconds. My homies and Clean Hands Dark Soul is Kathy from Woman Who's Sarcast, Terry from Mixing Up Midlife, Vanessa from Fabled, Hunam is EDU Me, and Carolyn is Wellness While Walking. That should be everybody. Good. Oh, fuck. Yes, this is why you don't ever list names. That group also was really helpful because, again, we just all talked about life and podcasting and creativity and just like fun, silly things. And it was, again, it's a nice distraction to have friends like that who maybe aren't living the exact same life you are. They're not in the same city and you're just having all these different experiences and it really helps open your eyes about things. And um, they're just very helpful. So also shout out to all my friends here uh, for basically dealing with a very depressed Elaine for the past few months that just complained a lot. I'm like, thanks. So, ew, that was really mushy. Can we get back to bitching? Sure. Okay, 2021. This year, this new year. You know, I'm not gonna like set a New Year's resolution or even goals. And you'll notice I stopped doing goals episodes and I think I want to do them again. I'm just not sure how because I feel like there's something more there. I can just feel it in my bones. I just don't know what it is. But I, if you know me, I love goals and I love making dream boards. I haven't made mine for this year yet because I basically had like a medical issue going on that was like quite painful. We're good now, but I did Googling and I thought it was dying basically. I'm not. We're fine. That was never the case, but that's kind of taken up my past two weeks. So I um, wasn't able to dream board. <laughs> I'll probably do that tonight. And uh, part of the exorcism will be uh, writing down uh, on a piece of paper uh, 2020, and I will be burning it safely. Um, but I, I love burning things. Maybe that's another issue I should bring up in therapy. Um, sage! I'll burn some sage, too. It's fun. Uh, fuck 2020. You suck. Goodbye. Um, 2021, I... I have some like things I want to keep doing and like other things I want to keep in mind. So not necessarily like a mantra, but like just floating ideas, because how does one even plan for a year anymore? I've tried many different things and they all keep going to shit. (laughs) So let's try again. My friend Kathy has a theory that because I bought a cursed tarot deck from Goodwill, I might have brought this all upon us, in which case I do sincerely apologize. I now keep it in a drawer in a desk that I never open. It's like Chumanji. Like at some point someone's going to find it and like I won't be able to warn them and then chaos will ensue again. But for now, um, it's just it's there. It's fine. (laughs) Right. But back to the the whole point of 2021. So one of the things I want to do is act sooner rather than later. And this just applies to a lot of different areas of my life. But like medical issues, I just talked about one I had back in the day. I was so anxious, I didn't want to go to the doctor or ask for help because I just didn't know what to do. Like to this day, I'm afraid of ever needing to go to the ER, not because of whatever situation would be going on with me, but because I don't know the system. Where do you park? Do you have to like dramatically run in? Like checking in? Where do you sit? What do you do? I don't know the etiquette. I don't know the system. Like that's the thing I'm most anxious about. (laughs) Which just, that says it makes sense. But that shouldn't stop me from getting help if I need it. Um, And so this last time I was very proactive and I've kind of been proactive this whole year in terms of appointments and just, you know, not putting off big things that I know I'll have to do eventually anyway. Uh, I had a whole episode about the fear of my oil change. I was just losing my mind over it. And then I was driving home from someplace one day and I was just like, I'm doing it now. I'm doing it now because I'll never do it. And I I did it and it was done. 
in like 10 minutes and I felt so much better. Uh, and so I want to bring that energy into 2021, um, even just in terms of life wants. Like, I, if I know I want something, why should I wait for it? You know, I mean, aside from like figuring it out and like making sure you're not just like being wild without having thought through all the consequences, but why not go towards it instead of just going, oh, that'd be so cool. Like, I wish I could do that. Every time I hear about that, I wish I could do it. It's like, well, you can make a plan. I mean, it might take a while, but why can't I do it? I just assume that like there's these things that people can do in life. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's impossible for me because I've set up this like rule in my head where I can't live that kind of life or that's just not me. And I realized that like there's nothing stopping me from like becoming an audio drama podcast, which, uh, you know, I'm not going to do full time. That takes for fucking ever. But, you know, things like that, where it's just like, if I want to live my life and own like a T-Rex shaped purse, what is stopping me from doing it and wearing it with confidence? There's just so many shit things in life where we put ourselves through it because we think we're supposed to and we don't necessarily have to. And I'm going to have a lot to say about that this year which I'm really excited about because, and uh, you know, in 2020, I radically accepted, you know what, this is the kind of person I want to be. I need to start acting like that person. And it's working. (laughs) Fake it till you make it, I guess. So I want to keep doing that. Uh, You know, fuck the little like voice in the back of my head saying that's impossible. Like there's always a way it just might not be the easiest. And then maybe I don't end up wanting to do it, but I'm not going to immediately shut down possible life paths or just ideas or even like rearranging my office as weird as that sounds I just completely redid the office I just moved my desk in a different place and it feels completely different but I just was like I don't know the furniture's here why would I change it again like that what girl what are you doing so um yeah like that's the Elaine scale of uh you know (laughs) I don't even know what to call that not pathetic um what's a nicer word I I have a big range of things to work on let's go with that (laughs) I also want to read more this year. I really did a lot of good reading last year. Um, I thought I was going to hit my reading goal on Goodreads. And I had hit 30 out of 30. And I was like, hot diggity damn, I did it. Um, and I looked at all the books I'd read and I counted. And I was like, this isn't 30. And some of my books have been counted twice. So I actually had 23 out of 30 books. And then it's New Year's Eve. And I'm with my small group of friends. And I tell them this tragic story and it's 1130 p.m. And they go, no, 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 we won't let that happen to you. They all pull up royalty free Dr. Seuss books and short stories and read them very quickly out loud to me. So like, oh, the places you'll go. One fish, two fish. And with that. I read 30 out of 30 books this year. <laughs> and that might seem like it's cheating, but I've actually never read like, oh, the places you'll go. I've just been annoyed about it because it's at every fucking graduation. And I'm like, can we have some originality, please? And then it was kind of fun. Like, these were the books I read as a child and I hadn't like reread them as an adult. And it was kind of fun. So I don't consider it cheating. I think it was hilarious. And uh, it just cracked me up that my friends just immediately were like, oh, fuck this. No, we're in the middle of a game. We're drinking. We're having fun. We're going to stop this. It's 1130 p.m. You are getting those extra seven books you need. Uh, But I like really dove into audiobooks and reading really helped my creativity. Consuming other media, it was really helpful to boost you. Uh, and I, I dived into that. And, uh, one of the things along with that is I want to actually listen to more podcasts and kind of like throw myself back into the podcast community. It's kind of time consuming to try to reach out to people, to be honest. Like there's some people you just instantly mesh with just because you like love, I don't know, tweets and get obsessed with your dog and up slowly chatting in DMs. It's like, oh my God, we're friends. But I used to be a lot more proactive about finding other indie podcasters and like listening to podcasts that really like vibed with me. And then I was intrigued by the person. And then I just like did more reach out. Like I didn't really listen to podcasts in 2020. And that might be because I didn't have a commute. I know a lot of podcast people like their their listens were hit because like just the the mindless tasks you have weren't there really anymore. Because who's cleaning their home in quarantine? Not me. You are? Yeah, me too. Me. Me too. Uh, mm -hmm. 
But the opportunities are gone. And I just found it hard to listen. Like, I could not explain to you. It might be because when you're depressed, it's hard to focus. And I guess like the I I mean, the audiobooks I was listening to were like trash summer reads. Like it was perfect. I didn't have to do a lot of heavy thinking. Like that was the kind of uh, intake of media I needed. But I want to get to know more podcasts and more people. And I'm forever trying to find my mental health podcast groupies. They're kind of hard to find. And like in the way where like I'm not a therapist, you should if you don't know this by now, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a professional. I'm just somebody with mental health that talks about it. And so I'm not always sure if people are going to vibe with me on that level. And you know, I don't know. It's like it's a different vibe, right? Like I'm not trying to uh, bring in clients. I'm not trying to share specific scientific knowledge. Like I'm a weird podcast if you haven't grasped it, but I would love to find more of my kind. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm Nemo. Like, where are you? Where are my, my folks? Uh, but anyway, that that's kind of on me because I just haven't been looking. Uh, you know, I love podcasting, obviously. And the more you learn and listen, the more you uh, know about the craft. And I always want to be better and keep learning. So I would like to try to get my ass in motion on that. And I highly recommend you try to find some more podcasts out there. There are many beautiful ones. Actually, one podcast I can instantly recommend to you. It's called Who Knows with a question mark. Um, and that's run by Taylor. And she's a mental health podcast. And she's fun. She'll have uh, people come on. And her Instagram is hilarious. So if you like this podcast, you will love her podcast, too. I think it'd be fun to open up your eyes to all the different podcasts out there. There, like literally, there's one on everything. D and D podcasts are also my jam. I'm listening to Dungeons and Daddies right now. It just makes me laugh, gives me a good giggle, and I think we all could use a little extra Sarah Town in right now. In terms of personal life, I love to schedule things and clean more. Like I actually got my shit together this past year too, because I was, you know, I joked about it earlier, but I am living in my home now a lot and I work from home and I'm just like, I hate my disgusting ass house. So I've been cleaning it more and being more on top of it, which is really lovely. But I uh, would like to have a better life schedule. Um, You know, like with the podcast, for example, I do enjoy when I'm ahead and I have ideas and I've set things up. And my biggest achievement at the podcast last year was being able to put up timestamps if you're ever curious, I have timestamps in the description now. So if you're like, I don't care about this fucking section, I'm instantly attracted to what she's going to talk about here. I let you know where in the podcast it is. So you can just go boop, boop, boop. I'll listen right there. I've seen people do it for ages. I'm like, how do you have time to do it? And now I like know better editing and know like, oh, as I like listen through, I should just fuck. That's so easy. And I'm just like never considered it. But I'd love to be able to like schedule out the podcast so I don't, I don't know, have like three months where I'm just like posting one episode. Uh, and I used to really pride myself on always being there weekly, but also, um, you know, perfectionism, you got to let go of some things. And I needed to not always be posting. I didn't really get anything out of it. And probably the shit I would have put out wouldn't have been listenable, digestible, fun, interesting. For, you know, 2021, mostly I'd like to have more of a bearing on what I'm doing. And it's weird because I'm in my second year of podcasting, or am I in the third year now? I'm working on the third year. And it's always weird because you think you'll run out of ideas and it seems that I haven't yet, but that's always a fear. But life is forever changing and so is the opportunities to do things. So I'm kind of excited. I feel like I'm entering the podcasting again with a fresh mind because I did sort of take a break there. And I just have more energy and I feel a lot happier now. So I'm pretty excited to just like actually create a schedule and have things ready to go and make my life easier so that I can actually have more time to do more fun things with the podcast. So get excited and be on the lookout for some really cool things. You can subscribe to the podcast or you can follow me on my socials uh, because I always post things. Okay, enough plugs, Elaine. This isn't a, an outlet. <laughs> It is an outlet for my feelings. Okay, dad jokes aside. Um, yeah, and then, you know, I guess one of the last things just in terms of like life shit, I don't want to be afraid to like be creatively weird. You know, I'm a mental health comedy podcast or I don't and I still don't know if that's, a you know, the right way to say that, but uh, that's the closest I have so far. And yet I've been doing like casual audio dramas and I, you know, do tarot shit and um, I'm OK with that because I think I can do whatever I want with this podcast. Uh, Because I can't, it's mine. Um, And so I don't want to be afraid to like keep trying weird shit like that. 
because you guys uh, seem to enjoy it still. So I'm not going to hold myself back from doing that. I'd love to try to do more of those like parody guided meditations. Now that I'm not so in my head, I think I can probably try it again because I had the whole perfectionist thing going. I'd try to get on the mic and do it. And I was like, this is shit. This is stupid. Stop it. So no more. I am deleting that voice. And uh, in all aspects of my life, I'm just going to go for it. I think if I had one mantra, mantra, sure. For 2021, it's going to be go for it. Because I think we all learned in 2020 that you got to appreciate what you have right now. And there's no time like the present. So why wait? Do it while you can. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I hope that you go do the things that you've wanted to do, because why not? Go for it. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Angus IT. I really appreciate y'all hanging with me this past few months where I wasn't posting. Uh, thank you so much for all the lovely, hilarious comments about the Christmas special. That was such a, like, I don't know. I'm just glad it's done, but also I was so happy about it. If you want to uh, get more, like, behind the scenes and fun stuff, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Angus IT. I am always on my Insta stories with some fun stuff. That's also where I post pictures of my dog, Fern. It's a fun time. You can go to my website, www.angusit.com to get the episode show notes for this uh, fuckery. I think I'm kind of keeping up with it. I don't know. What else do I say? It's been so long. If you feel fancy, aside from DMing me, which my DMs are always open, again, you can actually email me at angusit at gmail.com. However, if you're wanting something out of me, do not refer to me as Angus. My first name is not Angus. My middle name is not I, and my last name is not T. Work a little harder. In fact, Easter egg, I put my full name in this episode. Where was it? I don't know. (laughs) Sorry, I'm getting sassy in 2021. I hope that when you go to uh, exercise your 2020, you burn a lot of things and you have a lot of fun as you burn them and you enjoy uh, just the chaos, but like also have like a fire extinguisher on hand because you should... Smokey the bear. Um, He will be sad and he's cute and his little overalls and his big hat. He's a big fancy, sassy little guy. Oh my God. Okay. And with that, I will talk to you next Wednesday. Bye, halfers.